Alright, what is up you guys, and of course, welcome back to another Wi-Fi Bell with your stroll of course, the Skyrender, and we going up against, well, the master really, um, uh, if I remember correctly, Kentucky Torah Cats, and just I don't say that wrong, and uh, I'll be honest, it's kind of scary, his team is really good, and I decided not to upload my team builder for this battle, because it's very likely that we will be fending off against one another again, and I don't want to take that risk. Plus, Midmaster is one player I really respect. Um, looked at his battles, and uh, if anything, I kind of want to tell you guys that there aren't often that I really, really want to see people really get or and watch somebody, but this is definitely one of those guys. Um, very surprised not to see Salassel as that gonna make Primarina kind of weird. But we see Hill Disk. Like I said, check this guy out. Um, really great content. We see Camo, um, Scavalier, Scavalier. Always butcher that name. Blastoise. Which I fear is a Shell Smash variant. And we've got Grim Snarl, which could be um, dual screen. And then we've got Evil Log. Like I said, really surprised not to see Salasso. It's absolutely seeing that over. If I'll be honest, like if I'm leveling here, uh, I was kind of seeing Salasso easily being a bring here over possibly Avalog, though he needed a spinner of some kind, so it makes sense. But, uh, I mean, his easy turn one should probably be Hilderlisk. So I'm gonna lead off with a Scarf variant of. Uh, Hydreigon, and my hopes is that somehow, uh, and I really mean somehow, um, that we can either unsecure um, if he's scuffed or not, or if it's just not a set, basically to ensure if Gengar is faster or not, because Gengar might very well work really good here. So at least not with Hillis, that's fair. So either U turn, well, U turn or Dragon Pulse. And if if it isn't Scarf, then we'll U-turn out of there. If it's Scarf, I'm gonna take a Dragon Pulse, and we're gonna just ensure that it is Scarf. So right, he isn't Scarf. U-turn's gonna do all right. I have no idea what he tries to do here. Um, it's not like I had like an easy switch in. I'm gonna bring in Desotroya. Think. Or the ex-wife. Bring in the next wife. <laughs> um, we're not gonna take this dragon pulse well, but I should bandit I should take him out. Uh, focus blast! Absolute mad lad and misses! Ooh. That is rough though, isn't it? That is rough. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I mean, that was a really good play. So, I shot against Avalog. Yeah, looks about right. Smart play. Probably predicting uh, the rocks, really. It's right. Um, my easy switch in here is uh, Celentria. Basically, I am rest sleep socks. The intention says either if it's a defensive set, then. Uh, he could toxic me potentially. Um, that's gonna be annoying, but we can absolutely deal with it. Alright, let's see. Withdraws Evil Log, goes to Heliolisk. Cool. Could I assume him to be Specs? Sending in this Troya. This is like a rough switchings back and forth, as I do believe Grass not does a whole lot on us. But he wouldn't go for Surf, I think. Grass not. Okay, cool. Right, so he's in Specs. He's Life Orb. Ooh. 
really surprised to see um, really surprised to see grass not over surf uh. damn I don't like switching into this guy at all ah uh, I'm burning the timer sitting in dine I think it got a Volt Switch or go for a Focus Blast. Keeps Grass nodding, so that's good. I didn't do anything that did it. So bringing in the ex-wife, um, I think it's going to try the Volt Switch. It's a right right period. I'm I'm a bit annoyed by that play, but at the same time, right period's role is kind of redundant with Salasal not here. Let's see, Hyper Voice. That's all right. It's gonna do fair damage. Go for nice shot again. He does wheel us down kind of right. <laughs> like, if he does the heal a little again, I mean, that's fine. I'm gonna have to make up my mind soon enough. Uh, <laughs> I knew Hill was going to be a problem, and now I'm just feeling kind of weird. Um. <laughs> Alright, I think I want to take him out though. He shouldn't hyper voice this time. Oh, the wrong item. I'm supposed to be expert belt. Let's see what he does. I think he hyper voices here. It goes right for a thunderbolt, which we should take. Yes, finally get that play right. And uh, I think he switches out here. Um, Let's see if we can catch somebody with this. Um, because I think the Pokemon that comes in now to preserve it is um, uh, is Gavalier. So get the heat crash going. Since he, uh, since he is double switching so much. There you go. Nice. And yeah, heat crash is to play. I think Evilog is kind of in the right switch in here. Or one takes a gamble. I really want you to stay in, buddy. Feels like every time Hildas comes in, something dies. That's not the best spot to be in. I'm kind of glad it was life for, but you know, at the same time, I'm kind of worried. Because I'm having to whittle down the team that much. If anything, I'm getting heavily whittled down. Ah! Coward. Two Ava Log. And Ava will take this really well. Because it's only 40 base power. I'm gonna Rock Blast here. I feel. I feel we need we needed some kind of breakthrough. But 
Right, you're just saying. Come on. Oh, that was a crit. That was like, damn, that did a lot of damage. Keep going. Two more. Ah, only three. Right, Avalanche. That's cool. So, Evil Log knocks out right here. And very fair, to be honest. Um, KO. Right, Carrier. So if I were him, I'll probably... I force him out with Sylvan Tread, don't I? Can I do that with Ex-Wife too? Nothing on the team want to take some choice bad that quick, so... We, we do that. Do the sacks either log or not. But basically I got him down and that's kinda good. Evil log is not like a big threat, but it does keep some months away. He does decide to stay in. So we get to knock him out. For now, he has to consider whether or not I'm scarfed. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm thinking the same. Uh, I have one perk with Gengar, with Culverberry, which it wasn't supposed to be, and that is that if I get a nasty pot up, I can do that versus this Cavalier. I kinda want Grimmsnarl in. Grimmsnarl could carry Sucker Punch, that's gonna be annoying. There we go. you. Because I think he is still scream, but I really won't, I don't see the point of taking that risk. What are we seeing? Scene reflect. Cool. So it was something was kind of fairing, but basically we get a good chunk of damage anyway. And we have Defog on Hydreigon if things go sour. So he's decided not to stay in, which I think is alright. To Scavalier. Now in theory, Scavalier can't do that much to us, and he always risks of getting potentially burned. So I think I just keep Moonlasting. It does stay in, which I see knock off, that's gonna not do anything. Let's see if we can snag a skull burn then. Right. At least we pulled that off once. I need just one burn. Ah there I go. Cool. This iron head. That's nope. So now I can just keep moon blasting. I think you realize this. This was a scenario I was kind of. Um, I shouldn't say hoping for, but rather was trying to push for. So he's switching now is Heliolisk. Cool. I think we knock him out here. I'm, I'm not that worried. I right, go, cool. Breaking through. Now we own the speed here with Gengar. And Verizion. I was really worried about these skull please because I know Hedrigan comes in and that's like that's it. It's a free switch in, so. I say I got that play right, but at the same time, really, did I? I think he light screens up here just to try to soak as much damage as possible. I 
and I lose nothing by keeping Moonblast? Oh, Jesus Christ! That was a crit, that was a... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm sorry man, that clearly should have taken a lot less. Right, with Raw's Grim Snarl, I think goes a Blastoise here. The only reason I go for rest is because I can hope I can abuse this. Shell Smash, right, it was that variant. And it's white hub. Right, skull, cool. Get that burn, buddy. I'll take anything. Dark Pulse, right? So resisted. Oh, he really must be wondering what to do. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of in the same area. Another Skull, cool. Get that burn, buddy. We need it. So we're going to wake up next turn. Um... Because I can only figure it had Dark Pulse. I'll, I'll, I'll try this. So they wake up next turn anyway. I mean, Joshua Berry, hopefully he goes for Dark Pulse here. We can get ourselves a boost of 1 plus in attack. And that Ice Beam does not knock us out. Surf. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. Right, Leaf Blade. Ah, I really was hoping for that Dark Pulse. Ice Beam, pop the Asha. Whether or not we survive, probably not. But at least we popped it, right? Ooh, hoo -hoo! Yes! There I go. Away with D. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. We're in the endgame now. Back to Grim Snow, that's right. Let's see. Can I see how many screens he has left? Light screen, two turns, cool. That means he'll get his reflect up and probably not his light screen. We'll see what he does. Reflect. We'll just Moonblast away here. It's too late! And I wake up just to finish you off. Alright, now we don't have a Kibya Bearer left, which means that if Karma O is carrying, um, and that's really the worst part, if he's carrying Poison Jab, it could very well kill us with not that physically bulky, we just have investment in our, in our HP really to benefit as much possible for rest. So, you know, I'm not feeling this, and that is a marvelous color in HD. I've been waiting so long to see Kamo shiny. That's that's easily the best shiny. Poison jab. We have to keep your berry. What happens to us? We live. Hell yes. 
Hell yes, Prima Arena just dominates all of this. And I, Prima Arena was like the first Pokemon I played this game and didn't think it was gonna be essential. But here we are, just doing our thing. And I mean, we gotta preserve this, we gotta preserve this kind of record. I need the 5-0, I know I'm well within KO range, so we'll just do this. Um, like I said here, this, this is something I've said in the beginning, but I kind of want to cover this as this was something I was very worried of, and that was Salassel, as Salassel filled something that I couldn't deal with. Uh, Salassel had um, Sludge Wave, which I didn't switch into naturally, every Pokemon on my team was slower, so not seeing it, I'll be honest, it was a real surprise as... as well, like I said, I didn't necessarily know how to deal with it. I was kind of scared of a variant of um, Power Herb Solar Beam even. Because it, it felt crazy enough to beat me. But yeah, we're getting to the wrap up. I mean, I've got one more sleep talk and hopefully it doesn't score a skull on me. Or a, I mean, a, a crit on me because then it gets KO. I really want to preserve this 5-0. I'll easily stack right period for the greater good as that hill is in the beginning screwed me over so badly that um, I didn't... <laughs> or I kinda knew I couldn't win. And um, just getting that opportunity to really break through with um, with Primarina is kinda huge. I didn't think it was gonna happen. But, like I said, this situation with Scavalier was something I was kind of hoping for and getting Hillis out of the way really made it impossible for my opponent to beat Primarina. And that's why I win, because Primarina didn't have Shakes to deal with it. So we failed to kill him, he scores a crit now, that's all on me. So we got a burn killing stuff with Skull. And that's a final victory versus the Kentucky Tot Tora Cats. It was the Coca Cola Cora Cats. Kind of screwed it over. And, yeah, like I said, I think I think you had the matchup to do this really well and might have might have overlooked something that's really all I can say um, as I think he had he had like Reuniclus and Slassel two Pokemon I think was gonna absolutely dominate me in the right environment but he planned differently and while I do want to know why I also really really just gonna say that I'm you guys saw the same game, right? You saw once Hillis was gone, Prima Arena didn't necessarily have any shakes left to stop it. And it just blew the game open. I was really scared of a Blastoise variant with Shell Smash. But then again, if it wasn't physical, it couldn't carry something like Earthquake then. It couldn't necessarily hurt me all that bad. But I really just didn't want to allow it to set up much further. Which is why I switched into my Varician. I was kind of hoping for Dark Wolves, you know, beating that. A close combat to boost, but there were if <laughs> one of the Grimmsnarl comes in again instead of over Kamo, I knew I had to bring Primarina back because I couldn't let Kamo um, you know Dragon Dance freely and the only way for me of doing so was actually getting Primarina in. I could potentially go close combat uh, and then hope that I show was gonna kill it, but I didn't even consider that once. Uh, Primarina was an absolute MVP this game and uh, that's really all I have to say to my opponent, you know, really, really good game, and I really want to know what went through your head, as I think there was a more ideal team, and maybe you backed out on that prospect, and if so, um, I respect you even more for it. But for everybody watching, make sure to check out my opponent's channel, um, he is really one of those creators I think needs a bit of a hand, as he actually does really great content, yet hasn't the following, because he's really smart and had a good setup, I love it. Uh, so with that said, it's all you guys for watching, and have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.